Hey there, let's play a game. I want you to hold your breath while I talk to you for a little bit, okay? No cheating. Good, let's begin. Right now, we are watching an all-out attack on freedom. Literal secret police are being dispatched by the hundreds, and in some cases the thousands, to American cities to quell civil disobedience. There has been reported instances of protesters being rounded up and taken away in unmarked vehicles by unidentified agents of the state. And I just can't help but wonder where the right-wing gun crowd is during all of this. Isn't this their whole thing as to why they insist that they need their guns to fight off a tyrannical government? I don't think a better opportunity could ever present itself. They certainly have no problem defending a criminal farmer and his rowdy friends storming a federal office with rifles. Aren't these guys supposed to be against the presence of big government? Then I can't help but think about other inconsistencies. This whole administration is one incoherent mess, you know? 45 came into office with overwhelming support from the evangelical Christian lobby. This is despite the fact that he is a twice-divorced, three-time unfaithful philanderer who doesn't go to church, read the Bible, or seem to actually care very much about his Christian faith. Why would they be supporting someone so baked in all of the sins they abhor? You think that they would speak out against that? Hmm. Oh, and then there is his complete lack of business acumen. As a businessman, Trump has managed to lose more money in investments than just about any other person. He has built an entire career on declaring bankruptcy, stiffing contractors, and destroying almost every venture he's taken on. Surely Wall Street and the capitalists out there would pull their support from a man who managed to lose money running a casino, lose money running a pro football team, lose money running a sham college, lost money selling vodka, and had to literally break the emoluments clause to make any money at his garbage resort in Florida. And yet, crickets from the majority of Wall Street outside of a couple billionaire pissing matches with equally garbage human beings. What about the very patriotic military supporters, right-wing parents of veterans and active-duty military? One would think that they would see his cuts to VA funding is antithetical to his campaign promises of taking care of soldiers. Heck, at the time of writing, three soldiers have been found dead at the same military base in Texas and he's done nothing. The highest ranking member of the Republican Party should be considered an absolute embarrassment, and yet he still finds people who support him. When will these people realize they are being had by an ultimate grifter? Oh goodness, you're still holding your breath. Stop, 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 stop. I should have mentioned that the average untrained adult human will begin struggling after only 30 seconds without breathing. Well, I guess the lesson to learn here is obvious. If you're waiting for that moment when conservatives will realize that they are being conned, don't hold your breath. It's easy to fall into this trap. Spending hours of your life you'll never get back pointing out the inconsistencies of Trump supporters, hoping that they'll see the error in their justifications for supporting one of the most incompetent fascists to ever hold public office. Well, I want to caution you, because you will lose consciousness due to dangerous levels of carbon buildup long before his supporters get wise to this. I think that we expect Cult 45 will get slapped in the face by reality and come to their senses. Sadly, for the majority of his increasingly polarized base, this will not happen. I want to discuss why I feel this way. It's actually pretty easy to identify the major umbrellas of Trump supporters. To an outside observer, this seems like they are voting against their own interests, but that's just because we aren't applying a more critical lens to the bigger picture. So let's dig in deeper together. First off, the religious right. Hot take here, but if Trump is even a Christian, he's a pretty terrible one. Infidelity, divorce, gambling, and his general unpleasantness as a human being are all things you'd expect dyed in the wool evangelical Christians to be against. And yet, 45 has the undying support of a large portion of the Christian community. Why is this? Well, like every other group we are going to cover, they are actually made up of single-issue voters. And to the Christian lobby, no issue is bigger to them in public discourse than robbing women and LGBTQ persons of their bodily autonomy. See, here's the thing. Fundamentalist Christians are super into enforcing outdated puritanical views on sex, gender, and procreation. Ever since the Roe v. Wade decision, they have been actively trying to reverse what they see as an affront to their delusional interpretation of holy text. They are ready and willing to overlook all of his many transgressions because they know that he will attempt to make good on his promise to criminalize abortion and alienate homosexual, trans, and non-binary persons. In the three years since he's taken office, more regressive policies attacking the rights of LGBTQ persons have been pushed than the last three administrations combined. 
The president and the people who are adjacent to his views are empowered to attempt to curtail the rights of marginalized people. His supporters don't care that banning abortions will just lead to more back alley abortions. They just want to throw people in jail for abortions. They don't care that LGBTQ plus persons are a part of the economy with constitutional rights like everyone else. They just want them to be too scared to exist. And don't forget that while Trump engages in anti-Semitic dog whistles, he fervently supports Israel and the fascist ethno state they seem intent on building. And he's, his evangelical supporters who follow twisted literal interpretations of the Bible believe that Israel is the Holy Land and as such carries great significance. Speaking of marginalized people, we have to address the very racist ambitions of the modern conservative movement. We mustn't forget that this is the president who had the endorsement of a former head of the KKK, earned a standing Roman salute from the literal creator of the term alt-right, and, and has appointed a dyed-in-the-wool white supremacist to his cabinet. He campaigned on a platform of specifically targeting Mexican and South American immigrants in his anti-immigration policies. He spent the entirety of his first term trying to make the country as hostile as possible to Muslims, to the point of openly calling for a ban on all Muslim immigration. On the left, we may be inclined to engage with these actions and remind people that immigration is a net positive for the economy and the knock-on effects of ending immigration or making it even more difficult than it already is will hurt the economy in the long term. But again, remember, when he engages in jingoistic, xenophobic rhetoric, he isn't appealing to the economically literate. He's speaking to the people whose ideal America is completely lacking in melanin. So racist will love him because he will openly push the same ideas that they advocate for, regardless of the ramifications. Finally, let's talk about that rare breed of parasite. The type of person that likes to say the country should be run like a business. The type of person who says taxation is theft. I'm talking about the wealthy. You see, wealthy people, and by extension corporations, tend to hate two things above all else. Regulations and taxes. Corporate entities can't wait for the chance to go back to pushing unregulated consumer goods and not have to waste the time and resources on pesky things like worker safety or testing or making sure that our pork isn't tainted with feces. They also love giving their CEOs large bonuses but hate paying taxes. Well, Trump is their golden goose. It doesn't matter to them that he's lost money in almost every business he's started. It doesn't matter that he is nepotistic to a fault, putting his own fail sons in charge of major businesses. It doesn't matter that he is, frankly, a scrub-tier businessman. They know, thanks to his party affiliation and campaign promises, that he will lower their taxes, allowing them to siphon even more profits from the excess labor value of their employees, and further endanger said workers along the way through deregulation. So that's it. Religious, racist, or wealthy. These are the main pillars of Trump's core base. They should be pretty easy to identify. Look for the morally righteous religious leaders who wish to strip human beings of their rights and autonomy. Look for the hyper-patriotic individuals who find every excuse in the book to demonize immigrants and defend the state-run concentration camps. Look for the financially secure business owner or CEO who defends their support of a dumpy, incompetent fascist vaguely gesturing at the economy. There are so many ways that the left can engage in direct action that delivers real, tangible change. So if you're watching all of these Trump supporters waiting to see when they're going to wake up to their own hypocrisy, honestly, I just warn you to not hold your breath. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell. Follow me on Twitch, where I stream video games and give lectures. Follow me on Twitter, where we can go from ashy to classy. And if you're so inclined, you can help me create more videos like this by checking out my Patreon. Thanks again.